eight-year assault on your Second Amendment freedoms has come to a crashing end. Uh, I like taking the guns early. I'll take the guns first. Go through due process. Second. Well, I say go fuck yourself. never concede. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. If you have to go home now, we have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. But go home and go home in peace. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. You do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. What is up, Riddle? <laughs> How you doing, Riddle? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Didn't really accomplish much today, unfortunately. Uh, got caught up in the Rittenhouse trial immediately after I was done watching, uh, or not watching, but participating in uh, the morning muster with Irish. Luckily, he figured out that he can do it while he's in his vehicle now, so it looks like the morning muster is back on, which is great news. I love doing, the, doing that with Irish, and... Uh, always a fun time uh what a trial today uh the bicep guy lefty if you want to call him anything he was testifying and it was hilarious watching him deny things like were you chasing after rittenhouse no i was not were you moving in his direction yes you were or yes i was were you moving quickly towards his direction yes i was but you weren't chasing him no i was not what were you doing well i heard that uh you know 
somebody hit or I saw somebody, you know, hit him or kick him in the head. And I, I was just going over there to see if he needed any aid. Meanwhile, his gun is in his hand after he just pulled it out of his pants. I don't know. It's it's one of those things that I, I kind of worry that, you know, I think the other side. What's up, OMG? I think the other side that that are going for the prosecution, you know, all the BLMers and everybody that was out there. This is a very political hot button issue, right? So you've already picked a side. Most likely the jury has as well. But uh, you either love Rittenhouse or you dislike him immensely or hate him, right? You either want to see him fry or you want to see him get off and you want to see the other people get in trouble. Because I know I want Bicep Guy to go to jail. He's a felon with a firearm who didn't turn over his phone. He said he didn't have his firearm to police multiple times. So, I mean, he's been caught lying. I don't know. The whole... I worry, though. I worry that, like... You know, one of the... When the trial first came on, I accidentally clicked on a link that was somebody's covering it, right? Kind of like what I do with the news, but they're just covering the trial and they're watching the trial live for however many hours that trial goes on for. And I'm like, they were a leftist uh, view on it. <laughs> Apparently they got banned on Twitch when they showed the clip of him getting shot in the arm, I guess. And they were all bitching. They're like, oh, it's these right wingers that are, that are, uh, that are uh, giving me crap, right? They're they're reporting me because they're right wingers. Not necessarily, but you know, whatever. Twitch doesn't like violence, not real violence. They don't mind video game violence, but they don't like real violence. What's up, Mule? Did you watch today's crazy written house trial? Oh my goodness, bicep, bro, or Unicep? Uh, that guy is hilarious. I mean, from my point of view, it looked like the, the defense absolutely murdered him on stage. Well, finished what Kyle started. <laughs> but on the other hand, I don't know if the other side believes that. And, and really, who knows what the jury thinks, right? I'm pretty sure the jury already knows how they're going to vote or whatever. But it's a very interesting trial. But the thought while I was watching the uh, the leftist viewpoint talking, you know, while the while it was going on. I basically saw what I do here and what I've done on Big Brother, and that is just commentate on what you're seeing, right? It's an easy thing to do, right? It's live. You're live. You comment what you think. Other people either agree or not. Most likely they do because the ones that don't agree will thumbs you down, report you, and leave, right? Which is what it is because I didn't even stick around, right? I mean, that's a thought. That is a thought. If I had more free time in the day, because I was only able to catch parts here and there, I did have to get some shit done. But uh, if I had more time, if seriously, if I just sat down and, and I, I streamed the entire trial, like from the start to finish, every day that they're there, I'm streaming. We're watching the trial together and we're commenting and, and yakking back and forth. I mean, just look at the dragon the other night. We got a few people in just because Rittenhouse was in the title. Not it wasn't a tag. It wasn't a hashtag. It wasn't nothing. It was just his name in the title. Now, imagine me playing that up a little bit with thumbnails and keywords and all that stuff. I might be able to get another channel up to a thousand subscribers and get it monetized. That'd be something. Anyway. Yeah, you did. Listening when I could. Yeah, we, we had it on the whole the whole time. And every once in a while, especially when they're playing the videos, we'd come running from whatever room that we were in. Like, ooh, they have FBI drone footage? Shit, I didn't even know that existed. That was amazing, right? And you see the prosecution try to say, well, he pointed his gun at, and there's no muzzle. And I don't know. It was crazy. It was crazy. What's up, Brenda? Hey, Gerald. So, yeah, I'm thinking of, we, we should probably cover that a little bit more often. I have no written house stories tonight. That was basically it. Um, that's what I learned from watching it. So, cool. It's been fun. They say it's going to be a, what, a couple week trial? 
and they've already been going for like a week. So what are, we got another week to go. Something like that. Okay. First of all, that's not where I wanted to go. I'll do that as the next one, though. So apparently Trump is blaming the GOP leadership for letting Biden's infrastructure bill pass. I didn't know it passed. This is the first I'm learning about. I mean, I learned about it when I set up the stream, but I didn't know it passed, but apparently it did. So let's find out. Former President Trump blasted congressional GOP leadership after 13 House Republicans broke rank 13 to vote for and pass Biden's bipartisan infrastructure bill. Wow. Wow, we need to know who these people are. I think I had a report on just that. No, I guess not. Biden's 1.25, sorry, 1.25 trillion infrastructure bill passed the House and headed to the president's desk after a group of Republicans saved it from falling prey to the Democrats. Oh, was it? Yeah, the meet the 13. Oh, yeah, I already have it up here. We'll just put that right over here. Thank you, Riddle. 13. Senate Republicans had already approved the bill. All Republicans who voted for Democratic longevity should be ashamed of themselves, in particular Mitch McConnell, for granting a two-month stay, which allowed the Democrats time to work things out at our country's and the Republican Party's expense. Trump slammed the Republicans who supported the bill as rhinos and warned that Democrats would take advantage of them to pass the second half of biden's agenda a massive 1.75 so there's your three trillion uh how about all those republican senators that voted thinking that helping the democrats is such a wonderful thing to do so politically correct they just don't get it trump said 19 gop senators including senate majority leader mitch mcconnell voted for the infrastructure bill wow and 13 house republicans voted for it Biden also, or sorry, Biden has already been touting the infrastructure bill as a win for his administration. Great, you count spending money that doesn't exist that we can't ever pay back as a win. Hey, hon, I just ran up our credit card debt up to twenty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. Aren't you proud? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Biden is already. Oh, I heard that part. Uh, and he and several of his cabinet officials plan to go on tour to promote it starting this week in Baltimore. Transportation Secretary Buttigieg, Energy Secretary Jennifer Grenholm, Interior Secretary, all these other people, uh, plan to hit other parts of the country as well. So they're all going out saying, it's great. We're going to spend, we're going to make money. You have to spend money to make money. In the coming weeks, those members and other senior officials will travel to red states, blue states, big cities, small towns, rural areas, tribal communities, and more to translate what the deal means for the people across the country. You know what I, I always find funny? Isn't the indigenous people, aren't they their own nation? And why can't we even call them Native Americans anymore? Now it's indigenous people? I thought that was for Eskimos. <laughs> I haven't even seen it, and I'm betting Collins from Marine and Angus King. Oh, okay. Well, let's find out. House of Representatives voted 228 to 206 on Friday to pass the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. Here are the GOP members who pushed the bill across the finish line. Representative Don Bacon of Nebraska. Well, I used... Used to like bacon on everything, but apparently I do not like bacon in my politics. Nebraska. Wow, you would have thought that Nebraska would have been like real people. But I guess every state has a city. Make no mistake, this is not the Bernie Sanders socialist budget busting bill, which would have cost American taxpayers their hard-earned money, he said. When that bill does come to the floor for a vote, I, it, I will be a hard no. But you are a... Positive yes for this one. Representative Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania represents Pennsylvania's first congressional district, which includes all of Bucks County and por portion of Montgomery County. His quote was, From the start, I have insisted on the passage of a hard infrastructure bill delink delinked from any other partisan social spending packages. 
Has it been? Is this just to do the infrastructure? Is the give illegals free health care? Uh, is the gender studies for Israel or for people in Iraq? Is all that stuff like the next 1.7 trillion or 1.8? This bipartisan physical infrastructure bill, will, which passed the Senate in August with strong Republican support, is entirely separate from the partisan reconciliation bill, which I opposed. Okay. Well, maybe they did change it. I didn't. I don't know if they did. They change it. You all need to tell me. <laughs> Representative Dave McKinley of West Virginia. After drawing a distinctive between the infrastructure bill and the reconciliation bill, which has, he describes as reckless, McKinley went on to suggest that he voted for the infrastructure in part because of the Internet, saying we have all heard stories of children in West Virginia sitting in parking lots to do their schoolwork because their homes are not connected to reliable bo <clears throat> broadband Internet. If you don't have good Internet, most likely you live out in bumfuck Egypt and don't want to pay the exorbitant uh, satellite internet, which not that great of internet anyway, or you just poor. Having internet access is not a constitutional right, although I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to do it. Um, after, oh yeah, okay. McKinley went on to suggest that he voted for the infrastructure bill because of the internet saying we all heard... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight I voted for those kids and to give the next generation of West Virginia's hope for a brighter future. So, for the kids, so that they could have internet, so that they could watch pornography before they're 18, so that they can game and have microtransactions on all the video games that they play, so that they can be spied on wherever they go. Seems like a great idea. I think they cut the pork. Yeah, it sounds like they must have, right? How do you get that many Republicans in order to uh, sign on to this unless you get rid of all that all that extra pork, as you call it? Which is what they call it, too, I suppose. There's pork, and then there's, a, there's other... I forget all the different terminologies. Representative Andrew Garbon, Garbonio of New York. I'm not surprised. There's a, I'm actually kind of surprised there's a Republican in New York. What? Garbarino. Garbarino? Thank you, Riddle. In a statement released the night of the infrastructure bill passed, Garbarino defended his vote, writing, After months of being held hostage by progressive Democrats, the House was finally able to vote on a bipartisan infrastructure bill. Make no mistakes, tonight's vote was about roads, bridges, and clean water. It was about real people and tangible actions Congress could take to better their lives by rebuilding and revitalizing our nation's crumbling infrastructure. If it actually goes 100%, to fixing roads and bridges, especially in Texas, because Texas has some shitty roads. And I doubt that they will because, you know, the current administration doesn't really like Texas that much. I don't know if I'd have a problem with it. I mean, yes, it's money that we shouldn't be spending. But if it's just going for that, it's probably the best money we've spent as a nation in a long time. Garbarino was also one of 35 Republicans who joined all Democrats in voting to establish the January 6th commission. Well, you just lost me there, Gabarino. Uh, John Katko of New York also voted for it. We got Nicole from New York. There's a lot of Republicans. Oh, no, representative. But no, they're Republicans. Yeah, 13 Republicans. There's a lot of Republicans in New York. Most likely in the outskirts, not in the city, huh? I weaken... I weakened their hand, <coughs> her, their hand, she said. They have no leverage now. I voted against AOC and the squad tonight. Okay. Maybe AOC's pissed. Who knows? Representative Tom Reed of New York, Anthony Gonzalez of Ohio, Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. We have somebody from Illinois. Um, he represents the 16th Congressional di uh, District, six-term congressman. He had nothing to say. He will not seek a re-election in 2022. So he's like, fuck y'all, I'm out. Jeff Van Drew and Chris Smith of New Jersey. Not surprised. Uh, Fred Upton of Michigan. Don Young of Alaska. No, Gerald B. I didn't see Collins from Maine or Angus King in there. So I guess they voted against it? Interesting. Okay. 
Let's get on to some gun stuff. Apparently. And I haven't done any research into this. And then I thank you, Guns and Gadgets. If you're not subscribed to him, I would definitely encourage you to go do so. He's got some good videos if you can get through the all the ads and stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> speaking of which, did you know that you can take a five-gallon bucket, paint it black, and take a shit in it if you don't have any other place to take a shit? I just watched an eight-minute video describing how to use a five-gallon bucket as a toilet on YouTube. That's a thing. <laughs> From somebody that's pretty well respected, in my opinion, for, for who they are. Anyway, Biden is stockpiling millions of records on gun owners. Um, the ATF, in conjunction with the Biden administration are making the bill that passed omg hold up infrastructure bill <clears throat> there we go i probably misspelled the hell out of that but whatever uh is it this one hr 3684 6421 that well that was when it was introduced um here's what's in it from cnn the most trusted name in news block okay one point here's what's in it the bill calls for investing $110 billion for roads. Oh. <laughs> so what is that? Like a tenth of what the bill costs? Nice. That's significantly less than the $159 billion that Biden initially requested in the American Jobs Plan. So we got less money to go for infrastructure out of the $1.2 trillion. Included is $40 billion for bridge repair, replacement, and rehabilitation. Uh, rehabilita or rehabilitation, that's endangered turtles or birds or mosquitoes, if there's such a thing. According to the bill text, the White House says it would be the single largest de uh, de dedicated bridge investment since the construction of the interstate highway system, which started in the 1950s. The deal also contains $16 billion for major projects that would be too large or complex for additional funding programs, according to the White House. What's that? Here's how the Biden infrastructure plan would impact key areas of American life. Okay, I don't care. I actually wanted to read it. But yeah, not all of it's going for it, so that's bullshit. Now why paint it black? Oh, so, so you know. So... First of all, if if you're going to take a five-gallon bucket, you got to make sure it's a black one, okay? Because it's hard to get a black five-gallon bucket, right? So therefore, you know, oh, that's a black one. That's the poopy one, right? That's all it's for. There's nothing else other than, so you know it's for the poop. You could write poop on it. You could even put a poo emoji on it. Or you could be totally tactical, paint it black. <laughs> no shortage of skeeters no there's never they're never gonna die that's all right if i'm missing something more omg please let me know uh i knew i wasn't gonna get a full story from cnn but just the realization that you know a tenth is going to actual infrastructure and then they they gloss over what the rest of it's going for. Well, the rest of it's for special projects that they can't usually get funding for. So they're just going to do this. You know, if Trump tried to do that for a wall, all hell would have broke loose. And did many a time. All right. Or trying to make what well, they're already making it. Uh, a registry, a way around the registry. What the do I mean? Check. Well, it's come out thanks to Gun Owners of America, who sent me some information a little while ago. Uh, I was talking with uh, Aiden Johnson, buddy of mine. He's the director of their federal affairs. Uh, they have uncovered, and I'll put some information here on the screen in a minute, that the ATF in 2021, they've amassed over, I want to get the number right, over 54.7 million records on 
gun owners. How do they do that? Well, uh, when an FFL goes out of business, then their records become property of the ATF. Wow. And the ATF takes those records, turns them into images, and then destroys the physical uh, record itself. And that's based off of the Gun Control Act of 1968. Now, ATF says that they're not searchable. However, my new iPhone can search text on a picture that I take, and Google can search images, so they're full of shit. They're lying. Uh, Now, how did they get 54.7 plus million records on gun owners? Well, that many gun sales places, FFLs, have gone out of business thanks to a lot of things, including the super coof. So (laughs) just in 2021, just this year, 54.7 million. How much did they get last year? How many the year before that? Uh, And this coincides dangerously with proposed Biden regulations that look to have these records kept indefinitely, perpetually, forever. Now, in an FFL, once a record hits 20 years old, they can destroy those records, thus keeping them from the ATF. I didn't However, know it was 20 years. if you're an years. FFL and you go out of business, or if your FFL goes out of business 19 years after you've purchased... Man, I was thinking I was all right. I'd be like, man, it's been a minute since I bought a new gun from a gun store. I went, Well, the last one was actually in March of 2020, but since March of 20... And that was a pistol. The last time I bought anything that they would give a shit about, it's been years. I was like, for sure they've destroyed it by now. <laughs> nope. It's a firearm? Then the ATF has records and transactions well, of everything of you might bought, be. every 4473, years. Even though they're not supposed to search it. No. Do you trust them? Because I sure don't. Now, them. those records uh, are stored in West Virginia. And, again, Biden really, really wants those records kept indefinitely. Why? Why would that be? Ask yourself that. Well, we just had a comment period they're gonna... for a couple major proposed hey. rule changes for the ATF. I know they're also trying to make it so you can't sell a gun to somebody else without doing a background check. So this way, they would be able to track every firearm in the country. Yeah, specifically, the redef- redefining a, what is a frame or receiver for a firearm yeah. and what parts get serialized server- and what could be a gun. And then there was the proposed rule to ban pistol stabilizing braces, correct? Okay. So AR pistols and stuff like that. Depending on the number you, you go by, there's up to 40 million of those firearms in circulation, legally owned, lawfully owned. But Biden wants to make a ban for that. And you're gonna say, I know the next question, Jared, wh- what's going on with those comments? Well, those comments, over 525,000 comments Strangely and oddly enough, it took a team of 50 ATF employees two weeks to go through over half a million comments. Oh, Guys and gals, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I can't stay up with the comments on this channel, and that's nowhere near 525,000 comments. But somehow they pulled it off in two weeks. Two weeks. Um I don't believe that either. Now I'm about to show you a document that Gun Owners of America got from ATF. And I'm going to stop right here and say, guys and gals, join Gun Owners of America. Seriously, if you're not a member of GOA... Do not, in my... And this is just my opinion. If you want to join any organization that... I would say any organization, to be honest. Any organization. Don't do a lifetime. If they have one available, don't do it. Because you never know... I know a lot of a lot of people that are lifetime members of the NRA that really wish they hadn't at the time. They they're doing a ton of work on Capitol Hill trying to get stuff changed. Lawsuits, FOIA requests. Uh, join them. Support those who support you. If you're a member of this channel, you can so you can join up under uh, GunOwners.org/GunsGadgets. I get nothing out of it. It saves you a little bit of money uh, depending on what type of Uh, membership you choose you can save more money so join goa they're doing great work and this document i'm going to put on the screen will show you just how many uh, records that the atf got this year so this is uh, the eps stats for fiscal year 2021 now the fiscal years run uh mid-year to mid-year guys and gals and Hmm. the bottom left corner the big box next to national tracing center division 
It says processed 584,186 tr trace requests. Trace Sorry. requests are for crime guns to try to figure out who purchased those. Uh, the next line, 54.7 million out of business records. Wow. And of that, 53.8 million of those records were on paper and 887,000 of them were electronic records. Now, for those who didn't know, every time you buy two handguns, more than one, two, you can buy three, four, or five, but as long as you're buying more than one, you get reported to the ATF. Back to that box. What? 1.65 million handguns reported as part of multiple sales program. He forgot to put this in the video. Program. That is good. That means there's a lot of people out there taking their safety serious, and they just don't have, you know, one type of gun that they have a couple of different. Maybe they're arming their wife. Maybe there's one in a one area of their home and one other person. Good job, guys and gals. Way to take your safety paramount. Now, same document. We're gonna go to the right side here in this box. What else did the ATF do this year? They published two new rulemakings, two notices, mm. 16 guidance doc documents, updated regulations, ATF.gov, with enhanced landing page and links to ATF forms. And we know the government, that probably cost, I don't know, $50 million because <laughs> we pay ab obscene amounts of money for websites. <laughs> but the next part here, I utilize only joined the over NRA 50 DTLEs to gone. process over 500,000 public comments on two rulemakings. And it took them two weeks from the information that has come out. Um, and John Crump put that out there and they found that out on a FOIA request. Uh, so GOA is doing the work, guys and gals. Uh, support them. So I'll, you know, if you want, right now. Uh, you, I'll have a, a link to this form if you want. You can print it out and, and get pissed just like I did reading this. Uh, but the key information is, is that Biden wants to make sure that he keeps these records permanently so he knows who has what and how many of them they have. And don't forget, he's looking to get, seriously, he's looking to get all the information on all of those AR and AK style pistols because he don't like that. This just goes to show you that they will stop at nothing. All right, now one thing I noticed over here in the suggested. Justice Thomas uh, speaks. 2A case, final prediction, NYSRPA versus uh, Bruin. 2021 Supreme Court gun news. This was November 8th, so today. I'm just going to play a little bit of it. It's armed our attorneys. We're the armed attorneys. Today, we're going to do a justice by justice breakdown of the latest New York State Rifle and mm -hmm. Pistol Association case v. Bruin uh, that was just heard recently in the Supreme Court. And make sure to stick around to the end. I don't think I heard about this. Kind of final prediction on what we think this case is, uh, how it's going to turn out. But before we get started, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And to kick us off, we have our special guest here, Nicole Schultz Korb. Uh, she uh, followed this case, listened to all argument took down some of the best notes that I've ever seen. So let's start it off with Nicole. Thank you, Richard. Yes, one of the absolute best first points is Justice Thomas Speaks, which is a rarity for Justice Thomas. Um, you know, and it's something we just simply cannot Let ignore. He starts this. off fresh out of I'm the keeping my money for my ammo. Good choice. To the petitioners, helping the petitioners. This is this video here. Gun rights in their oral arguments. I'm going to watch that later. If you're interested in that, click the link in a new tab. If you can't do that, like you're on a mobile device or whatever, let me know in the comments and I'll put it on the Discord as well. Since you're most likely in the Discord group since you're here. <laughs> uh, but I just don't want to watch it right now. So <clears throat> I kind of want to get back to the uh, Rittenhouse case because there was another video on there for the suggested uh, from Milwaukee News Channel, where he, I forgot to talk about, uh, he he asked them, "Did you point your gun at Rittenhouse's head?" He's like, "No." Then he shows him a picture of him pointing the gun at Rittenhouse's head, and he, "Where? What are you doing then?" Well, I'm not pointing it at his head. Well, where are you pointing it? Well, it's it's you know not at right at his head. Okay. <laughs> Dude's trying to get in semantics. We're about to get a bit. Don't get too excited, OMG. Don't get too excited. Every damn time I get excited about one of these things, something goes wrong. And not only that, but you got Biden talking about court packing. Can you imagine with Biden pushing as hard as he is with the ATF right now, if he decides that 
He really wants to go after it. And the Supreme Court then makes it where if you can't ask people to get a, a permit, you know, hey, constitutional carry for everybody. Can you imagine if the Supreme Court came down and said anything against the Second Amendment is an infringement, therefore you don't have to have a permit in order to carry a firearm because keep, which is own, and bear, oops, sorry, and bear, which is to have on your person, it means what it says. I don't know why you need lawyers. I don't know why you need to go through all these things when it says shall not be infringed. It's pretty fucking blatant. Constitutional lawyers should have had no problem with this. And we should have never been in this situation. Somehow, somebody got paid off or somebody didn't want to, didn't like guns and had an agenda or some shit. But I don't know. I hope. I hope. But even if we do get the win, there's a likelihood that it will bite us in the ass. Florida judge rejects school board's attempt to overturn ban on mask mandates. I don't want to wear. Hmm. Wonder where this is from. Florida. Florida judge rejected another challenge to the state's ban on mask mandates. Administrative law judge Brian Newman rejected a legal effort by school boards in those counties to overturn Governor DeSantis' order prohibiting mask mandates in public schools. The counties failed to prove that the emergency rule opt out provision facilitate the spread of COVID 19 in schools, Newman said. On the contrary, the evidence admitted in this case established that the emergency rule opt-out provisions strike the right balance by ensuring that protocols that govern the control of the COVID in schools go no, no further than what is required to keep children safe and in school, Newman wrote. The school board that filed the challenge are facing financial penalties for forcing children to wear masks in school in spite of DeSantis' order. They plan to appeal Newman's ruling, according to the association. So they're still making them do it. So it's like non-compliance-ish, right? Oh, you, you say we can't make the kids wear masks? You're going to have to wear your mask, Sally. I don't care what the governor said. Just put it on. And then they're going to get fined for every time they did that. They're never, The teachers aren't going to. I hope it, they're going after the teachers themselves. That's the only way you get anything out of that. Amen. I do pray. I pray on that all the time. But you know the Lord says that it ain't going to get no better before it's over. It's only going to get worse. So hold out hope. But don't get too excited. You know what I mean? Not the first time the courts have upheld DeSantis' mask mandate ban. In September, the 1st District Court of Appeals in Tallahassee also ruled in favor of the ban, arguing those who wanted to get rid of it failed to make a compelling case. How about this? If you want to wear one, go ahead and wear one. I won't stop you. But don't tell me I have to. When a public officer or agency seeks appellate review, which is the case here, there is a presumption under the rule of... Under the rule in favor of a stay, and the stay should be vacated only for the most compelling of reasons. The Santa celebrated the ruling, saying that he wasn't surprised by it at all. <laughs> well, he put in the right people, I guess. Well, that's some good news. Kyle Rittenhouse is doing pretty good. That's good news. All that pork. I mean, yeah, the infrastructure bill, we're still not going to go for infrastructure that much. It's still inflation. It's still real bad. But at least we're not giving gender studies to Iraq. I, I mean, take it where you can get it. You know what I mean? That's not a horror. That's not a good story, but it's not a the worst story. <laughs> uh, yeah, I already did that one. Taliban threatens to flood Europe and the U.S. with migrants. It's working. In the wake of disastrous American withdrawal from Afghanistan, the Middle Eastern nation faces a crisis as winter approaches, and Western nations refuse to allow aid money through. In light of the crisis, the Taliban has threatened the U.S. and other Western nations, claiming that it, it if it frozen if its funds are not unfrozen they will release a wave of afghan migrants 
Europe is going to be affected most severely if Afghanistan does not get access to this money, said Afghan Central Bank Board member Saw. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. You will have a double whammy of not being able to find bread and not being able to afford it. People will be desperate. BB say it. I don't know. I want to. I've got to come up with some pet name. They're going to go to Europe. Some foreign affairs experts and political analysts are concerned that the situation could be even worse, expressing worries that potential terrorists might be embedded in a... In, you think? Let me get... I'll tell you right now, they already were. They just don't have their orders yet. Instead of a direct military operation, it seems that the new globalist strategy is to suffocate the Taliban using the centralized levers of global finance. According to World Bank report, most of Afghanistan's holdings, $9.5 million. Dude, we spend that on a Happy Meal for the president. Are frozen by the U.S. Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve. Western nations have seemingly decided to use the nation's money as a leverage against the Taliban. Total reserves compromise holdings of monetary gold, special drawing rights, reserves of IMF. Members held by the IMF and holdings of the foreign exchange under the control of monetary authorities. World Bank and International Monetary Fund have both elected to withhold money from the nation. According to IMF, it is guided by the views of the international community. There is a current lack of clarity with the international community regarding recognition of a government in Afghanistan. Yeah, 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 I'm done with that story. I don't know. I'm kind of glad they're not giving them money. I'm tired of giving people money for nothing or for a promise of nothing. Like, oh, we won't attack you if you give us money. All right? I'm tired of that shit. I wonder who that gun was issued to, number 384. HDP is doing a live thing now. Yeah. Did he not know that I do live? Well, he might not know that I got my channel removed. He probably ain't part of the Discord. Oh, well. Kamala may have received a briefing on the January 6th event before it happened. Why didn't they do anything? I'm telling you. The more that comes out about this, the more that I'm in agreement that not only did they know that it was going to happen, but they tried to make sure it went off the way it did so that they would have talking points, possibly in another impeachment, but definitely wanted to rally against that side. Justice Department has now admitted after months of prosecutorial uh, claims to the contrary that Vice President Camilla Harris was not in the Capitol building during the January 6th event. The government has been using then-Vice President-elect Harris' purported presence, according to Politico, to charge the protesters under 18 U.S. Code 1752, which among other things prohibits unlawful entry to a building or grounds where the president or other persons protected by the Secret Service is or will be temporarily visiting. So there's a charge they can take off, and that's probably why they didn't want to admit it. Politico said that in a series of changing documents and other court filing, charging, sorry, in a series of charging documents and in other court findings, the DOJ has cited Harris' supposed presence as a given and an indictment indication of disruption caused by the defendant's actions yet a source familiar with harris movements on january 6th confirmed to reporters that she exited the capitol after the senate intelligence committee briefed that morning and that she had always been planning to leave the building at that time what's going on political suggests the prosecutors were relying on harris's presence as a backstop to pins in prosecutor uh yeah prosecutors charging documents uh, let's see. Conservative brief, on the other hand, contends that the Department of Justice simply had no idea where Harris was when the protest broke out. Perhaps a better question is why did she leave in her departure related to the information she was given during the intelligence briefing that morning? Did she have prior knowledge of a possible breach? It has already been reported. 
That's a very, I mean, everybody knew it was happening. They didn't know that they were going to breach the Capitol, but everybody knew that they were going to D.C. to protest, right? They absolutely knew it. How hard is it to be like, hey, you know, Antifa, you, you help us out, right? So you tell all your minions, get us some infiltrators in there and make it a little bit more violent. Get everybody riled up to, to go inside. And you can call, you can see if you watch the video every once in a while, they're calling out a fed that's trying to do that shit. And there was a one guy, forget his name, but he was on camera multiple, multiple times yelling that we need to go in there peacefully, but we need to go in there. And there, everybody was fed, 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 and he'd back up. He was never charged. He is not in jail and not even charged. And he was instigating it on video. It has already been reported the Capitol breach and even bomb scares were on the minds of Representative Liz Cheney and the head of Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency as early as December. What was on Camilla Harris's mind? How many times she has to go down on Biden in order to pay him back for the nomination? Maybe. How high are you, Gerald? Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but Kamala Harris tells NASA that black trees matter for environmental justice. Well, maybe I will. How long is this? It's not horribly. Proving once again that social justice lunacy lurks forever deep in the heart of racial... Okay, yada, yada. Harris asked NASA if it could use satellites to track trees by race. This should have been the top story of the night. This should have been the title of this. Who is running the country? I don't think Joe Biden's competent, in my own personal opinion. And uh, I'm, I'm having questions about her as well. She asked NASA if it could use satellites to track trees by race. In certain neighborhoods, as part of environmental justice. Wow. Can you measure trees? Part of that data that you are referring to, and it's an issue of environmental justice that you can also track by race, their averages in terms of the number of trees in the neighborhoods where people live. Oh, okay. We're not talking about trees in a forest, I guess. Trees in neighborhoods? How much is a tree? 20 bucks? Plant a tree! The breach was planned and they carried out by the left and the guy. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Riddle. Saw this story about a guy who was trying to get an asylum in Bel Belarus. Capital Belarus. Belarus. Capital right suspect is applying for asylum in Belarus, state media says. Huh. All right, I'll, I'll check that out. So if you don't have trees in your neighborhood, that's because you're black or underprivileged. Is that it? Because it's not that hard. Like, if you want to have trees, you can you could start them from a seed and do it for free. Or if you're worried that, you know, you can't start a seed that well, you can go get saplings and plant those for, you know, a few bucks. It's not like only rich people can afford trees. Twitterverse promptly went into orbit over the Veep's vacious inquiries. Too many white supremacist pines, not enough gender neutral black walnuts. <laughs> okay, that one's funny. Looks like the black communities will receive reparations in form of trees, wrote another, along with a pre uh, pressing question. So people no longer have biological genders, but trees, a plant, have races? I can't get over the fact that environmental justice and tree equity are real phrases Democrats use, wrote Matt Whit Whitlock. Reads like a parody. It does. It, it, it feels like we're watching a spoof comedy. Like Idiocracy, like the first, like the sequel to Idiocracy. You know how the first one's always better than the sequel? We're watching the sequel to it. It isn't. It's not. It's the prequel, technically. It's, it isn't. And it's not only Democrats actually using phrases like tree equity, but 
They're also spending huge amounts of other people's money to promote it. Well, yeah, they don't have to spend their own. Why? If I don't have to spend my own money, who gives a shit? A section of the President Biden's dubiously named Build Back Better spending splurge reportedly includes $2.5 billion towards tree equity and increases community tree canopy. According to the bill, the money is meant to provide... This is probably part of that that fund that, well, we couldn't usually get funding for it, but, uh, you know, this will be a great time. It's meant to provide multi-year programmatic competitive grants for tree planting and relative activities. If you want to plant a tree, you don't need to make it an activity. You just go do it. If if you want to show off for the cameras, that's when you get all the people together. You can take the nice photo. You got you got the little sapling right there. Everybody's holding, you know, got their arm around the other guy. Like that. You all take your photo and then you plant your tree and go home. It's not like they're really doing anything. They planted one tree. For all the time that it took to do that one tree with all the prompt and circumstance and taking the photos and the the interviews on the news stations and all that, you just love the planet so damn much. You could have planted three or four more trees. You're not worried about the environment. You're not worried about the trees. You're not worried about quality, equality equity or whatever you want to call it is disgusting absolutely disgusting instead of actually making a change you just want to look good on cameras talking about it virtue signal like huh so anyway for a tree uh let's see According to the bill, the money is meant to be providing multi-year programmatic competitive grants for tree planting and related activities to increase tree equity and community tree canopy and associated societal and climate co-benefits with a uh, priority for projects that benefit underdeserved populations. So they're going to plant some trees in the bad neighborhoods. Fine. Do you really need $2.5 billion to do that? At least, thanks. You know what? And they probably won't even be fruit trees or nut trees. How about instead of just planting good looking trees, you plant something that people can eat, right? Therefore, not only do you have something nice to look at, but you're helping feed them and cutting their costs down in their grocery store. I bet they don't do that. <clears throat> At least, thanks to the effort of the concern. Of Spacey Cadet Harris, NASA will be working to ensure that black trees matter and are getting planted in all the right neighborhoods. I am so ripping that off and making that a t-shirt. Yep. <laughs> a man who was wanted by the FBI in connection with the sixth event uh, is seeking asylum in Belisari's. Okay, Evan Newman, 48, is wanted in the United States on several charges, including violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds and assaulting and resisting law enforcement during the civil, civil disorder. On Monday, Belarusian state media released a preview of an interview conducted with Newman with a presenter declaring that Newman sought justice and asked uncomfortable questions and lost almost everything and is being pers prosecuted by the U.S. government. Persecuted. The Post reports that Newman told state media a lawyer suggest told state media a lawyer suggested he go to Europe before he could be added to the FBI's most wanted list. And after four months in Ukraine, he crossed into Belar uh, Belarus on foot. He also said he doesn't think he committed any crime. Well, I don't know. I didn't see what he did there. Uh, also known as you know, dictator. Most of the international community agrees. Oh, I didn't know this. Check this out. Okay, I'll read this part. Uh, the president, Alexander, whatever, uh, known as Europe's last dictator, has accused the United States of instigating prote or protesters who marched against him last year, accusing him of doing something illegal. Most of the international community agrees the election was, you know, great in his favor. Thousands of protesters are arrested and beaten, with some saying they were tortured in prison. Tim O'Connor, spokesman for the U.S. Embassy in Belarus, uh, that is based in Lithuania, told the Post in a statement that because of privacy laws, he was limited on what he could say about Newham. 
All right. All right, let's see. Biden is smuggling more than 70 secret flights of migrants into Florida. What's up, Anonymous? You planted four fruit trees last year. Three survived. Well, there you go. Four or uh, Three out of four ain't bad. The breach was planned and carried out by the left. Obama is the puppet master. He answers to Soros. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't be surprised if by uh, if uh, if Obama is actually kind of running the show behind the scenes. Like, I would not be surprised at all. Obama is an occultist and yeah, puppet. Him and Big might be rubbing sticks. Find out how many times Obama threw up the devil horns. Answer a lot for no reason. At inappropriate time. What like this? Or like this. <laughs> I've never seen Obama throw up the devil horn. They want clout, not the environment. Yep, it's virtue signaling, but different. Mm, maybe not. Free food trees, yep. Do you have a merch store? Not yet, no. I, I can't even get my new opening, dude. Every time I'm a procrastinator, like you wouldn't believe, and then I forget on top of that. So either I'm procrastinating on something or I forget it and I move on. And then I think about it later on, like, oh, I should totally do that. And then I totally forget about it again. That's my personality. I'm trying to improve that. But uh, yeah, Riddle, write it down. We're going to have a merch store. We got to get a merch store together. We don't have a lot of, you know, a lot of viewership, but, you know, at the same time, Y'all should be able to get something. And that whole Black Trees Matter, that's hilarious. I'm I'm definitely going to look into that. I'll write that down. 70 million secret flights. How many people on each flight? Or sorry, not 70 million. 70 secret flights. President Biden flew more than 70 secret flights to Florida. How many? Uh, like Probably, like, what, 100... How many people on a plane nowadays? Shit, I don't even know. Uh, over 70 air chartered flights, jetliners, airliners coming from the southwest border have landed at Jacksonville. Okay, on average, there's 36. 36 passengers on each of these flights. That's been going on over the course of the summer throughout September. Wow. And there's 70 in what? How long? One month total? Keefe said Biden's administration officials have refused to disclose any information about the mystery flights to DeSantis' office, so the governor's team has had to piece together all the information themselves. However, they still do not know who is overseeing the flights, the names of the migrants being transported, and where they are being taken. That's fucked up. You as governor of a state, which is technically the president of that state, does not know what's going on in his own state. something wrong about that i'm sure he wants to know he's just not able to know because the state's rights don't exist we're in a sad situation trying to run an investigation keith said who is facilitating this travel how are they getting here oh, soros uh who are the support people soros who are the sponsors soros we don't know definitely or specifically as to why Jacksonville is the chosen place. Uh, I kind of have a few ideas. We're having to watch and observe in effect spy on the government to see what it is they are trying to do in the middle of the night out of these airport facilities. Well, sounds to me like we should get the, uh, the troops together or all the concerned patriots who like to go to a protest and buy Trump merchandise. And we should all go to the airport, set up some booths. Have your, you know, bobblehead Trump dolls and all that, flags. And, and then protests at the airport when they land. They did that shit with the buses during Obama. Similar secret flights have been reported in other parts of the country, including Kentucky and New York. I bet you there's not that many in New York. Uh, New York Post projected that up to 2,000 children have been smuggled into New York this far. The White House has admitted that it has been orchestrating these flights, but remain unapologetic about the issue. They don't give a fuck. It is our legal responsibility to safely care for unaccompanied children until they can swiftly unified with a parent or a vetted sponsor, and that there's something we take 
seriously. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey, you five smack that like. There you go. No merch start. Yeah, I do have Amazon affiliates. I we don't. I don't know how to track that. I know we sold some stuff. I think Anonymous bought a tourniquet. Right, so I know we've sold a few things from the affiliate links, but I have no way to know how to check how much if I've got a certain amount of revenue. Is it a gift card to Amazon that I get, or do they send me a check? I have no idea. So it's not really paying me right now. It has the potential if I ever figure it out, or if you ever, if people ever buy enough stuff, maybe, but I have no idea. I do I do that first of all because I do buy stuff on Amazon. Uh two, it's stuff that I like and I personally think is a good product. So I hopefully that you guys do too. By the way, one thing that's not in the Amazon affiliate links down below is the new wave uh sous vide machine. So we have had nothing but issues with a new wave sous vide machine it's the most expensive sous vide machine well i don't know if it's the most it's one of the most commercially available sous vide machines on the market today by almost double the next one down so normally they go for under like around 100 bucks or less this one's 200 dollars, and i've broken the second one so we're gonna have to send that back to amazon and see if we can get a third I do like cooking sous vide. I just do not like that. I like everything about it other than it breaks and it stops working. But everything new wave that we've ever bought, including the invection oven, always seem to break after a few weeks or months or whatever. It never lasts that long. So that's how they keep getting money, I guess. I know it's long, but you guys will not realize how long it is after you get hooked on facts. Whoop, missed it. Hold up. Open to ideas for merch, though. Yeah, I would love if you guys if you guys have any ideas for merch or something like that. Please don't take it like I need your help. But I mean, yeah, if you come up with something, you think yeah, a stinger might like that. Hit me up. Hit me up on the Discord. I've got a video you and Riddle will particularly like. It deals with Jesus and the veil over most eyes. It is long, five hours, but it explains the clearest way. What's up? I Discord linked it. Thank you, anonymous. I will check that out. I know that's long, but you guys, yeah, five hours. Well, it is. We'll we'll probably watch it in parts, unless it's really enthralling. Cuddle up and enjoy it. <laughs> what the fuck is a survived machine? Oh, what's a survived machine? Thirty percent of millennials identify as LGBT. That's wrong. Well, I mean, the story's not wrong, but it's wrong. I believe it was 10%. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like back just a few years ago, before it really blew up, maybe five years, six years ago, it was like 10%. And when I sent my daughter to school, and I, I realized this, and this was back... Oh, I don't know, 2017, 2018, maybe 16. Right around that time, I'm noticing all of her friends are very feminine or very boyish. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I come to this realization that, you know what? I don't think that they actually are. I think in order to feel special in today's society... You you have to be special. And how can you be special? Well, I can't change the color of my skin. Right? I don't want to chop an arm off. I don't want to go into the military. How do I become a hero and special and protected so people can't bully me? So I'm cool. All these things. And it's being... It's identifying as that. It's the only... It is the only minority you can choose to join all you gotta do is lay some with another dude or another lady depending on your gender or it i mean who knows what your gender is nowadays you could just be like fluid and therefore you're not really gay 
well, today I'm a woman, so I like being with men. Therefore, I'm straight. Tomorrow I might be a man. Want to be with a woman? I'll still be straight. Is that how that works? But for me, I believe that, yeah, it's mostly because it's the only way to be cool or stand out. How do you be special nowadays? It's the easiest way to do it. All you have to do is say it. You don't even have to get the surgery if you're going to trans, right? If you want to be a trans, be a trans. Dude, I saw a trans at the weed store, right? It was like a day or two after Halloween. And I'm there in line to get my pot. And this dude in a dress and long hair that's like spray, paid, spray painted pink. One of those rattle cans from Walmart or whatever for Halloween. It was horribly done. Comes out and starts talking. I'm like, oh my God. Dude, you know Halloween's over, right? <laughs> I didn't say it. I kind of wanted to say it, but I hadn't gotten my weed yet, and I didn't want to get thrown out. So, I I don't I don't buy this at all. I think that we got about at least twenty percent of this just want to be cool and be special. All right, nothing there. Boom, Russia moving tank. Oh, wait, here we go. Russia moving tanks near Ukraine border. Intel firm says. Russia is moving more tanks near the border with Ukraine, defense intelligence firm Janus or Jane said, reinforcing Western concerns about reports of a buildup of Russian military forces. Wow. I'm not going to read all of that. Worse and worse, her new polls puts Biden approval at 37.8 and Harris at 27.8. Has... Has a vice president ever had that low of an approval rating? Wow. I dismiss. Democrats may want to replace both halves, and we've heard this too. I think it was on Friday y'all were talking about how they're not even going to run, neither one of them. Yeah, they want to replace both halves on the ticket in 2024. Uh, Biden's approval rating, job approval rating, fell to a new low in a poll released Monday, but the news was even worse for Vice President Harris. The USA Today University survey showed that 37.8% of Americans approve of Biden's performance in office. By contrast, 59% of Americans disapprove of the president's whose rating has been plunging since August. What happened in August? Afghanistan. Biden's previous low job approval rating came in a Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac poll last month, which showed 38% of Americans approved of his uh, with his performance, while 53 disapproved. Meanwhile, a paltry 27.8% of respondents to the USA Today Suffolk poll approved of the job Harris is doing. Well, what what job is she doing? Going on trips to South America <clears throat> to talk about spending more of our money? Not hers, ours. My children's. While 51.2% disapproved, more than a fifth of respondents, 21% said they were undecided about Harris, while just 3.2% said that they had made up their minds about Biden. Despite his plummeting numbers, Biden showed no signs of strain as he and First Lady Jill relaxed at their home in Delaware over the weekend. The president will also, was also all smiles as he and his wife returned to the White House Monday morning. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I don't watch football anymore unless it's on and I'm out and then I'm... I like football. I used to love watching football. It was hard to give up watching football. I kind of still want to watch football, but I will not pay, watch millionaires play a game that doesn't matter at all. It's just bread and circus, right? I'm not going to watch that and support somebody who doesn't give a shit about me and thinks that I'm the problem. And then once, while I'm trying to have my escapism going to preach to me about how, how racist I am or homophobic or insert whatever horrible thing I am here. Done with that shit. Thought it was only like four. I think it was like 3% in the 90s. I could be wrong, Gerald, but I think it was 3%. Yeah, sous vide. Oh, what the fuck is a sous vide machine? Okay. 
a <laughs> survived machine. Okay, so a severe yeah, there you go. It's cooking in a vacuum. So basically, you you can do it without a machine if you have like a dishwasher. Basically, you put your food into a vacuum. We use vacuum seal bags. It's the easiest way to put a vacuum on whatever you want to cook, right? You just put that in the food saver vacuum seal bag, suck it all up, and it's vacuum sealed, right? Take that vacuum seal. You make the meal all together, depending on what meal you're making. Some of you have to do it separately, but you take that bag and you put it in water. I put it in water, but there's other ways to do it. And then the machine, the sous vide machine that I have goes in the water, heats up the water and circulates the water. So it's moving around and it gets it up to a certain temperature. So for me, if I want to cook a steak in a sous vide machine, and steak is probably the best thing to cook in sous vide, in my opinion. I put a steak in there. I put it at 135 degrees Fahrenheit, set it for an hour. When it comes out, it's perfect, medium rare all the way through, right? And then I just torch it to get the uh, a little bit of a crust on it, and it's good to go. It's absolutely delicious. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever had issues with cooking steak where you try to get a medium rare, and it's like, like really well done here, and then it's like medium right here, but then it's raw in the middle, right? This is a perfect medium all the way through. And I never used to like medium steak. Or medium well. Well, I used to only like well done steaks. And it wasn't until recently when I started having some that were properly prepared that I was like, okay, I'll try it at medium well. And then I tried it at medium, and I'm a big fan of medium steak. So, uh, Actually, if you want to be part of the LGBTQ community, you just say you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the easiest one to be a part of. You don't have to do nothing. You can do it in a cooler with hot water and wrap it in a blanket. Yep. You can also do it in your dishwasher. A dishwasher. Right? So if you if you vacuum seal your food, I don't know what the temperature of your dishwasher runs at. And I have not tried this myself. But I have been told that you can do it in a dishwasher. Washer. Basically, you just got to heat it up even, evenly all the way around the vacuum sealed item. And the best and easiest way of doing that is in water. You can technically do it on your stove top, right? You just got to make sure your food is under the water completely. Nothing's poking up the top. Nothing's floating. Vegetables float. So if you have vegetables, you're going to have to have weights to keep it down in the water. But you can totally do it on your stove. You know, get a, a thermometer. Make sure your temperature is right. Stir it once in a while. I could cook some on the stove easily. Just the machine makes it easier. It's got a digital readout and all the fancy bells and whistles and an app. Unfortunately, it keeps breaking, so I'm going to get something else. State Farm pulls Aaron Rodgers commercials over anti-vax views. Apparently, Aaron, Ro uh, Aaron Rodgers does not believe that you should be forced to do something you don't want to do. Now, that's not necessarily my opinion. That is Aaron Rodgers' opinion, but it looks like... Uh, State Farm doesn't want to have him represent them anymore. So there you go. I'm not going to read it because we're way over already. All right. I have a Pampered Chef Grill. That's cool. I've heard of it. I don't think I know what it looks like. You can do sous vide if you have an Instapot too. And they, there, there are certain machines that say they can do sous vide. And yes, the Instapot says it can do sous vide. I don't know how much I try. You know what, Riddle? We haven't tried a steak in it yet. Let's. We got plenty of steak in the freezer. Every once in a while, we'll go to our meat market. And like, oh, we should get this steak. We should get that steak. We never cook it, so we freeze it. And uh, <clears throat> we got a lot of steak in the freezer right now. We need to get through. An air fryer, yeah, you can do it in an air fryer. I actually like, uh, before we did sous vide steaks, we had done a air frying steak. And if you don't want to have to worry about a lot of stuff, or maybe you're just not really good at grilling, an air fryer is really good. It's really good. I think cooking it properly or cooking it in sous vide is still better, but uh, not by a lot. 
you can do it in the cooler cooking it without power you bet i maybe if if you had a uh a Yeti cooler, one of those vacuum sealed metal coolers, maybe, maybe, but like the steak needs to be at about 135 for an hour and watching the, the sous vide machine and even with canning, cause we do low temperature canning for some of our foods, uh, especially the sweet pickled cauliflower. We do low, uh, temp canning for it. Uh, it's 180 to 185 for 30 minutes. So that way it doesn't cook it as much as if you got it to a full boil. And, uh, but anyway, it, it goes up and down quite a bit. So you got to be careful with it. But we, we do the, before we actually use the Savid machine to do some low temp canning and it was amazing. It was really easy to do. I didn't have to worry about it at all. Now that it's broke, I have to, you know, break out the thermometer and we got to get it right between that window of 180 and 185. But I'll tell you right now, if you if you have a steak in there at 135 and you have it in a cooler and you just set it there in an hour, it'll come down in temp. I don't know how many degrees depends on the cooler, but if it doesn't come down more than five degrees, I think you'd be OK for an hour. But there's other cooks that they have for going for over 24 hours. I think one of the turkey ones is like a 24 hour cook. So it doesn't save you a lot of time. But the great thing about sous vide also is it's a set it and forget it. So if I if I put a steak in, it needs to be there for an hour. But then I get called away for a half an hour and I can't get back home or even another hour. Let's say I overcook it by another hour instead of an hour in the sous vide. It's in there for two it's still going to be great. It's not going to be overcooked or nothing. It's going to be the same as if it was in there for one hour. Now, there are limitations to that, but it's very forgiving. You don't have to be there on it and watching it all the time as long as it's under that water. Crockpot. Yeah, I have a very nice air fryer. Sweet. We have the Ninja Foodie air fryer, the one that flips up. It's really nice. It's got a lot of great reviews on freaking reviews. Did a review on it and a few other places. And we love our Ninja Foody air fryer. Thing's amazing. Uh, this woke stuff is getting ridiculous. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do about it? What can you do about it? Can you vote it out? I don't think you can vote it out. As I said, the world's just going to get worse. As as believers, if you are a believer in Christ. And the Bible, you know this shit don't get better. Read the end of the book. <laughs> That's why you wrap the cooler with a blanket. Keeps it hot longer. Yeah, okay. I'd be interested on a Yeti cooler. Those things are super expensive. But we were talking about them a long time ago because I'm so tired of going through ice as much as we do. It'd be interesting. It'd be very interesting to do something like that and see if it would work. If you got a Yeti, you might not even need the blanket. But I've never tried it in a cooler. I do have a cooler, not a Yeti, but I I, I do have a cooler. I could I could run a, a test, maybe not with a steak, but you know, put put water in it at a certain temperature. Although you got to get it heated up and then pour it into the cooler, which is then going to cool it off as you're pouring it into the cooler, right? One thirty five is like the bare minimum temp for stuff usually. I mean, it's not the bare minimum because you can get like a rare steak at like I think it's one twenty five, right? So, but uh, usually you're working right around 130 or, or more. So getting the water in the cooler that hot originally, that's that's going to be an issue. You can't just put that cooler on a stove. I mean, you can put a pot on the stove and then pour it in, but that is going to lose some of the heat. Or you just get it to boiling, then put it in the cooler and wait for it, leave the top off, wait for the temp to come down to where you want it to be, put the food in put the top on yeah i can see you do that anyway guys i'm well over my time i gotta get out of here thank you very much for being a part of it i hope you had a good time i know i sure did i love talking to you guys i hope to see you all back again next well tomorrow and i will hopefully be on the morning muster tomorrow if irish is up for it uh check out all the links down below we do now have the pickle pipes and the pickle pebbles as affiliate links uh so if you want to get into fermenting your vegetables or whatever you want to ferment 
don't think there's any illegal things you can ferment. But uh, if you want to get into fermenting, I highly suggest those things. They're a little pricey, but they're reusable. And as long as you don't lose them or destroy them, they're going to last you a good long time. And it beats the method I used to use for fermenting my vegetables, which was an airlock, <laughs> which always gave me a pain in the ass. The igloo with the top locks closed with the handles. Igloo is probably a good brand. I don't even think I have an igloo. What do I have? I have an island breeze. Oh, no, we have an igloo. We have an igloo. Yeah, it's right there. Igloo Island Breeze, family cooler, 48 quart, 45 liters, 75 can capacity. Hmm. There you go. The top's coming off of it, though. <laughs> Somebody sat on it. Not me. I didn't do it. I don't. I, I actually still don't sit on things like that. When I when you're big, like remember, I was over 500 pounds at one time. A long time ago, I've been right around 400 pounds. For most of my adult life, right around 400 pounds. At 400 pounds, you worry about where you're gonna sit. You don't sit on normal things. I see people sitting on a on a milk crate. I ain't sitting on no milk crate. I know exactly what's gonna happen. Uh, I see people sitting on that cheap, shitty plastic furniture at Walmart. I ain't sitting on that shit. I know what's gonna happen. Those legs are gonna break. Shit, even metal chairs. I have bent the legs of metal chairs. You gotta you gotta pay attention to where you sit when you're big. So. I don't, I still look, I still do that though. To this day, I'll be like, I ain't sitting on that. Not realizing that I could probably could. I'm like 256 pounds right now, which is really good for me. And most of it's just extra skin now. So who knows? I'm almost, I'm almost to my personal goal weight that I set. The, the doctor's like, well, you should be 180. I'm like, I ain't ever going to be fucking 180. I don't even want 220. If I get down to 220, I'm happy. And I'm like 36 pounds away from that. So it's it's doable. All right. I said I was going to go and I kept talking. So Arctic coolers are cheaper and just as good. Arctic. Okay. I will look into that. We are looking for a cooler. It's going to have to be just as good as Yeti though. Is it that vacuum sealed metal shit? Anyway, hit me up in the discords. Check out the affiliate links. Make sure you're following me, all of the socials, all those links are down below. If you want to throw money at me, do that. Just know that half of it goes to Rally Point Irish. And I will see you tomorrow for the morning muster, maybe, but definitely here tomorrow night for another evening catch-up. Until then, make sure to keep your family close. Watch out for that government. Try to live as free as you can in this world. <laughs> Don't forget to, to paint your poop bucket black so you know it's a poop bucket. And I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.